Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ducks Quacks. It's a beautiful day here in Redmond, the mothership, don't you think, Chris? Beautiful day in Redmond, as yeah. always. And this is a normal day, but uh, so excited to be with Christoph here. So Christoph, why don't you introduce yourself, tell everybody how you're changing the world. <laughs> That's a bold introduction, but hello everyone, I'm Christoph Weisinger. I'm on the uh, Office 365 group services team, and I'm sure you heard about groups. Um, and I'm a program manager uh, on that team. So groups, I guess you're the most popular kid in campus these days, huh? It's definitely, uh, you know, it was interesting to meet a lot of customers and partners at Ignite uh, in Atlanta where, you know, maybe a year ago people thought it was an experiment from sure. Redmond and uh, we committed to that and now that SharePoint integrates with groups, right. Yammer soon and now with the team's announcement, at least people realize that we are serious about helping people uh, collaborate. Sure. And I'm sure there's a lot of information already out there around groups. People can look it up. But let's let's get to the crux of the conversation here is what have you heard and seen and observation since groups came out? Like, I'm sure you've talked to customers, talked to partners, talked to MVPs. What, what kind of, I would say, behavior or responses have you been getting? I mean, I've seen all shades of gray. I think overall, you know, especially this week, uh, talking to fellow MVPs that are, you know, our best and brightest uh, on the front line, is a lot of people see the value that, you know, we did. There were a lot of friction in the past, a lot of silos to really help someone get started and, and run a project, whether it's a day project, a week project, or a six-month project. So people see the value. With that, there's also a lot of questions and potentially tension of, okay, I get where you're heading, but my where I'm at today, I'm on-premises, or I started with a SharePoint deployment, or I started with distribution mm -hmm. groups. So how do I rendezvous or potentially move some of those things that are already invested in, into that new world sure. that Microsoft is investing in? So, so speaking about that, uh, existing investments, I'm sure there's a lot of customers out there that may have already looked at the cloud or they may already be there. Yeah. But then traditionally, right, all these workloads from SharePoint to exchange for email, uh, even IM and, and all these other workloads, traditionally, it's different pockets of people that own it and are responsible for it. Correct. And then for groups, groups is like the all-knowing, consistent yeah. keychain that ties everything together. So how should people think about that? And how should, I guess, they, they, they should plan for it in their organizations to make it work? Yeah. So two answers. I'll give you the, the quick one. Hopefully, end users don't have to worry about that. Right. If Christoph needs to collaborate with you, Ducks, who's not part of my active directory, and we need to work on a uh, presentation, have a couple of meetings, take some notes... Hopefully, it should be seamless to bring Ducks in and you and I use the different apps to, to mm -hmm. get work done. From an IT perspective, what I've seen in it, um, recently or during the past year or so is traditionally our IT, for the right reason, were organized by applications. You know, right. Maybe you had the SharePoint admin, Exchange admin, the security team, yeah. the security team, definitely an Active Directory person. And <clears throat> as, you, as you mentioned, now that group is kind of like that glue, that substrate across all the workload, I've been telling customers, or at least when I talk to IT, please, you know, if I'm talking to the Active Directory person that's talking about policies and naming conventions, like, okay, great, great discussion, but please bring in your SharePoint admin if you have one, or your Exchange admin if you have one, your community manager from Yammer if you have one, and so forth, because that glue is tying all the services and you i want to make sure you guys agree on what is governance means for Contoso. absolutely from both the active directory down to let's say an application like sharepoint in 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 from that perspective obviously it, it's a big shift in how people work and people operate but i think more and more at the end of the day if if uh we start thinking about that way right we have that group mindset yeah. per se uh, i think in the end the experience will be much better for end users in the business because it's not going to be this siloed initiative Hey, we're launching SharePoint. Hey, we're you know we're upgrading email. But then there's this consistent thread because as users, I I use all these things yeah. to get my work done. No, I, you're an advanced user, so you're oh, special. All right, all right. I'm a power, you're a power user. user. That's what but, my mom says. I'm special. No, no, but I, I agree. Like it's it's this journey where we definitely want to delight the users and make people's life easier. Whether it's managing a project, running a team, or a community of interest or community practice. But obviously, we also think a differentiator historically being Microsoft has been make sure we give you all the controls, the security and trust, especially with the clouds. And so it's this journey where, you know, we want to make it easier mm -hmm. both from the people that manage around the hook 
from day in day out right. to operate the services, but obviously you start by delighting the users. Because you know, one thing that I've learned um, was on, when I was on the Yammer team is, sure, you can build all the toggles to control things, but at the end of the day, if users aren't going to use it, Sunny, you wasted a lot of money into things that exactly. aren't going to delight your users and very using third party, shadow IT, and then you exactly. get a bigger problem. So, so, so Christoph, I've known you for a long time, right? We, we've known each other, I, I would say 10 years now, at least that's the first time I met you. But do you think your background in all these different technologies and different roles helped you shape your thinking, especially your role today in groups? Because you were with Project at one point, right? Yeah. Yammer, and, and I'm sure you've done a lot of other stuff in the past. Uh, it actually has. Uh, you know, I think I, it's true that I started on the on project on project server. Before that, I was in consulting. I think the maybe it's my own motto that I want to keep learning every day. And I don't think like what we said when Satya mentioned last week that we don't think one size fits all for collaboration. And again, you know, if I rewind back to when I started my career, where it was the one page memo that was the way course, to yeah. make decision. You printed it, and religiously you get signatures yeah, from everyone. Yeah. Hopefully, everyone check. If you didn't check, you had to go redo sure. it again. Um, and so I don't think one size fits all. Yet you need to provide modern tool that people can easily use. And you know, so I, along the way, when I was on project or when I was Yammer or, or later with groups, I always learned something. I think one thing that I learned with Yammer, back to this notion of toggles, is you really got to delight the end users mm. and provide value before you start thinking about putting a lot of controls and toggles and fancy UI. Absolutely, yeah. And sometimes the... Um, what you thought would be a good UI, a good experience, end up not being correct when you look at high user, user mm -hmm. product. And that's why I was making fun of you that you and I are power users. We definitely have an opinion, yeah. but we might not be representative of what 80% of uh, people collaborate. But that's okay, right? Like like uh, I watched uh, uh, launch of Teams. You were talking about Teams and Satya talked about it's not one size fits all, it's a toolbox. And obviously people raise questions when Teams was announced, like, oh, another tool, right? Yeah. But the way we think about it, at least the way I would tell customers when they ask me, so I asked them, like, let's take Microsoft Office. Today we don't think about it. Do I create a table in Word or Excel or Access? Or OneNote. Or OneNote, yeah. We just or know. Sway. <laughs> or Sway. Now, it, it's not going to be perfect, right? There's yeah, always that one person in the company that creates their tables in Word, right? And we can't sort it. Yeah. But that's okay, right? And, and I think with all these technologies, that's the mindset we should progress with. I love my email. I'm sure you love your email too, to a certain extent, and that's okay. Yeah. But then these modern ways of working, like Teams, for example, we had a quick conversation. It's perfect for teams, literally, that are fast-paced, working together, feedback, talking, you know, yeah. they want thumbs up, emojis, it's uh, all yeah. good. But if that doesn't work, that's okay too. Now, I think, yeah, so a couple of things. Yeah, teams typically we say, you know, it's for high velocity team. And what we mean by that is, you know, typically to give you a concrete example, like maybe a team of traders that may be trading commodities, and maybe you and I are trading whatever, coal or whatever. We probably have a second screen experience where I say, right. ducks, are you going high on low on coal or whatever? Blah, blah, blah. And again, that second screen experience, you know, we don't have time to send email. Like it's That's near right. split seconds, like thumbs up, thumbs down, yada, yada, right. yada. Um, or another example that we've seen in media where if I'm working on the cover of the newspaper for tomorrow, or I've got to close my true. editorial. I need your picture or your editorial so I can close my cover page so it can go to the press. I don't have time to say... To write a nice email. Yeah, and, and word know, maybe I might do a nice email afterward yeah, for yeah. a great job and a great cover we did, but in the moment, right. I don't have time to that. And it's kind of like Christoph being European or maybe just being Christoph with Latin blood. A lot of the time, I'm impatient. So what I do is sure I can you use. You impatient? Mm, don't tell my wife. Okay. She already knows. But um, what I do is yes, I use email. Yes, I use Yammer to broadcast big announcement across the company. But a lot of the time, what I do is I actually look at presence. And exactly. if the person is green meaning available, it's like maybe it's okay to and typically I type like can you talk? Yeah. And because I'm old fashioned, I just do a good old fashioned voice call to either exactly. make a decisions right. or settle a disagreement and yes i could type an email and yes i can use yammer yes i can use teens but sometimes you know something more immediate even more urgent than typing is well, well, like good old-fashioned talking i mean last week right i texted you hey christoph can you talk yeah and then you ping me on skype okay let's skype yeah but but we know we inherently know and in our personal lives we text we message on consumer tools like facebook and that's fine yeah 
it's funny because that's also the, the example I use when I talk to administrators. They say, oh, we'll block groups. I was like, okay, yes, you can, and you get the tools and you can block it. But, you know, in 2020, 50% of the labor in the U.S. will be millennials. So I don't know if you interview people out of university. I've done a couple of interviews lately. Um, like focus focus groups or just... No, interviewed hired oh, 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 for hire, hiring people. New hire. Right. Okay, and, okay. and I always ask those kids, I'm saying kids, like, what are you use? What did you use at your university yeah. to collaborate on whatever, the yeah, computer yeah. science, the English project? And it's amazing because most of them didn't use email. Yes. And, and you could argue, even us back then, maybe we didn't have email or it was not very accessible. So the point is, I'm back to the point to IT is, yes, you can turn it off. But that generation that's going to join your workforce are going to have different expectations on different patients. If you're not giving the yep. tools, you're, what you're fighting against is it only takes Christoph two seconds to do a WhatsApp, a Facebook yep. Messenger. And or that company posted a big ad on New York Times. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So just be careful because people's patient um, can only go so far. This is the only age right. where I get a, a, a phone with a any app that I can download. Sure. And potentially that could put uh, the valuable IP at risk and potentially, uh, you know, company can get in trouble and exactly. lose its competitive edge. You, so know, you know, one of the... It's, um, a, it's a tension. I want to fully realize that there's compliance and regulatory, but also you don't, you can't not, you can't say, Mr. Marketing Team, you're launching a new product, you're going to spend $15 million, wait a year till we give you a share repository to put all your PDF right. on your banner. You don't have time to wait a year to no. launch your product. Oh, or you VPN in because you can only use this machine. Yeah. You know what? I need to get my job done. I'm going to swipe my credit card somewhere and get it done. Right? Yeah. No, that's that's a great point. So what would be your advice, right, moving forward, especially to our IT colleagues out there? Um, how to kind of think about this, but more importantly, position it in their organization? Because groups is still relatively new. <clears throat> it's exciting. But mm -hmm. this is something I think that would change the business. So how can IT be the, the innovators and the business enablers to, to help advocate a technology like this? So I think like to start, I would say, again, to make it very simple, if you bought Office 365 to not just put mailbox in the cloud, personal storage in the cloud, or just leverage uh, Office Pro Plus, if you bought it to enable more than one person to collaborate with another, whether it's within your company or outside a directory, then you need to look at groups. Because like we said earlier, SharePoint integrate with groups, mm -hmm. Yammer uh, very soon. You can have a Skype call with your groups, Teams integrate with groups. OneNote. OneNote, Planner, etc. So if, if your charter is to help more than one person to collaborate, then you should definitely consider groups. So the next question is, okay, how do I start? So we do have actually extensive documentation on supportofoffice.com. Not only at the high level, what are the government's administration, but then at the individual workload levels, you know, what does a new team site connected to groups give me sure. and so forth? What does a planner give me in terms of task management? That And even teams, right? And teams, even teams. Yeah. So we got a lot of content available and we get a lot of recordings from, you know, Ignite and stuff sure. like that. And I think also the last thing is like, look at all the content we have and we're not perfect. We also have things like Fast Track to help you on board. And even if all those don't answer your questions, then, you know, give us feedback or, you know, ask your favorite partner to get on sure. board with this journey because sometimes it might not be a technology question, but more of a change management question. Yeah. And, and from a feedback perspective, obviously, there's user voice. Yeah. People there's user get, voice. Yeah. We get uh, tech community. Tech community. So definitely, definitely a lot of channels to get feedback in addition to consuming the content that we're constantly releasing. Awesome. You, you know, Christoph, this has been very, very helpful. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to take advantage of your impatience i guess uh we're gonna do hopefully if you like this and everybody's requested to learn more about groups we'll, we'll schedule christoph or somebody in this team for a webinar so we could do more live q a but other than, than that thanks again christoph for this time i uh, truly appreciate you um we'll see you again for the next episode thanks bye thank you ducks bye